Hello there, this is Daniele from Toolchefs and in this video we're going to have a look at how you can use the Kiko UIs inside Maya. So you might have already the code uh, locally, uh, we're looking for two Python files that are under Kiko Extra Mayas and uh, uh, these are the two files basically, so exp export chef buttons and import chef button.py and they contain the code that you can use inside Maya for you know um, exporting a Kiko file and importing. So you can use this in a shelf button or in a menu really up to you. Uh, so I'm actually copy pasting the code inside the script editor and running it. Uh, if you're wondering what the code does is uh, the first two lines initialize Kiko and uh, it's always uh, you need always to initialize Kiko before you can use the exporter or importer. Um, it's just it's fine if you just run them once like these two lines uh, but anyway it doesn't it's safe to run it multiple times just because Kiko knows already when it's initialized so uh, if you run it uh, even more than once, it's just gonna it, the second time and the, and so on. It's just gonna the initialize call is just gonna be ignored. So, um, so okay. So the imp exporter is open. First thing that you have to do is you have to select a file, a destination file. I'm just gonna overwrite this one that I already I did previously. And uh, uh, don't worry about the extension. It's just because the extension is defined by whatever data mode here you have selected. So data and image is gonna be Kiko and data only is going to be .kb and the only difference in between these two is that uh, with data and images we're actually exporting a playblast and uh, you know save it inside the, the Kiko file so that later we can use it into um, our importer dialog and see the playblast then you can export the selection or uh, the hierarchy so for instance if you select uh, this the rig transform here and you select below it's going to export all the DAG nodes that are under the rig node and uh, um, of course for animation uh, uh, like the works it, the, the selection works best but if you have like for instance a, um, a hierarchy of uh, collocators you can use the below uh, method and it will be just fine um, um, well, an important thing to know is that uh, uh, you shouldn't ever select uh, a top group and then a child group and then use the uh, for the um, the, the below so hierarchy below and it's just because uh, you would end up having the same information twice inside the, inside Kiko because the rig hierarchy will, will contain uh, the rig and under it and then also you have the ball mesh so ball mesh and everything that is under it so you will have basically these uh, three objects of ball mesh and uh, these two shapes uh, twice in the same uh, in, in the same Kiko file um, then you can uh, basically say I want to export just uh, from you know the start and end frame you want to, to use the GUI frame range or I want to export all which means that uh, if for instance you have uh, your curves that are going uh, are not just inside this frame range but actually they are uh, you know going from frame 0 to 100 you will actually export uh, all the keyframes uh, actually let me change the frame range here just because the animation is just 24 frames long and uh, I'm gonna uh, also change it here uh, and so here uh, basically this is uh, where you define uh, uh, your camera that is going to be used for uh, the play glass so I want to use the perspective camera and uh, this fr the you know the frame range for the play blast and uh, uh, the sampling uh, so basically uh, it, it's good practice not to have uh, all the images for the play blast inside your uh, Kiko file this is because the Kiko file can become quite big uh, quickly uh, and especially if you have a very long frame range um, yeah like it's good to have like you know to sample you know just uh, three fr uh, like one image every three frames so and this is the default but you can of course edit this so if you want to have all the images for your um, uh, play blast uh, so in, in your frame range you just uh, you know type one and you're gonna end up having all the images um, then here we have some Maya preferences, so uh, we, like we have ignored shapes, so shapes are not going to be exported and this is particularly useful whenever you select the below um, method, so just because the uh, shapes can be quite heavy to export, so just uh, just ignore these and then use reference, referenced animation curves um, I'm not going to use it just because we don't have any reference animation curves in the scene but in case you do and you want to export them as well just you know check this one on. Um, 
and finally here we have the operator so this is like the the, the only technical part and uh, I mean I'll try to make it as simple as possible so here in Kiko um, what exports the data out of the Maya scene inside the Kiko file is actually operators so here we have four which are the, um, the default ones uh, so the curve operator is gonna take care of exporting curve data so animation curves data inside the Kiko file Bake operator is just gonna take care of uh, um, baking any attribute that has an incoming an input connection uh, in the uh, in the Kiko file, and then the static operator is just gonna export a static value. World space operator is just gonna export a world matrix for the uh, for the you know for the transform that you are exporting for the DAG object that you're exporting. Um, Every one of these operator knows when uh, it's appropriate to export, uh, when it's good, when it's safe and appropriate to export data. So, for instance, the curve operator knows that it has to export a curve only when there's an animation curves attached. The bake operator knows that it has to bake the animation only, uh, the, sorry, the attribute only when the, um, the there's an, an an input connection coming into the attribute. Um, so uh, you can prevent these, uh, you know, like the, the operator to take this decision for you by just selecting the force evaluation. But this is, the, like if you select this, uh, um, all operators that are selected here uh, will, be, will be exported regardless of to whatever, whatever they think. And then, so, uh, so basically these are the operators. We have two different, uh, there are a couple of differences for operators. So the first one is that we have channel operators and um, item operators. So the, uh, the channel operator is actually, there are actually operators that are, um, um, are working on, um, on attributes. So in this case, the curve, bake, and static operator that are actually working on single attributes. So they're exporting an animation or a static value for an attribute, while the word space operator is actually an item operator because it works actually on the item, on the object and not on a specific uh, on, a, on a specific attribute then another difference is that we have both bake operators and uh, channel and uh, sorry standard operators so uh, bake operators are uh, operators that uh, bake the of course the data as we are already we have already said and uh, uh, whenever you have uh, one bake operator uh, uh, so, yeah one bake operator selected like uh, if we add like the bake operator here selected you would see the cursor of the timeline when you click export um, you know, going through the entire timeline because they were baking uh, the values. Um, uh, but of course, if you don't have it, uh, we if you don't have any bake operator selected, you won't see this happening. You won't see the the cursor going through. Um, you will uh, would you would still see that happening once, just because we're gonna export a play blast. So now I'm gonna uh, click export, and we're gonna ha click export by after having activated the curve and the static operator just because uh, for an animation it's just fine to export uh, you know animation curves and static values if you have a, a constraint that is driving um, you know like one of your controls you can uh, use the bake operator as well but just in this case just because how it is set up I just I'm happy with just the curve and static operators so I'm just gonna click export and of course I have to select the controls that I want to export before Exporting like that, and now I have my Kiko file ready to be used. So now I'm gonna go back to um, here. I'm gonna select the import shelf button, and I'm going to copy paste again. Sorry, should have done that on the script editor. And this is the importer. So first thing again, you have to select uh, a file, and as soon as you select the file, you'll see if it's a Kiko file and you have a preview, you'll see that uh, uh, here you'll see the play blast here. So uh, if this was a KB file, you would just see the Kiko image, so the static image. So, uh, but yeah, so here is your um, play blast. Uh, here we have a bunch of options. So for instance, you can uh, say I want to apply my animation. So it means that. Uh, uh, the animation that you have already in your scene is going to be removed. You can insert, which means that uh, the animation that you have in your scene is going to be shifted by the um, frame range that you have in uh, your Kiko file. Replace is just going to replace whatever you have, uh, whatever animation you have in your scene uh, uh, in that in the frame range of the Kiko file. You can provide also an a frame offset value here. 
a frame range. So say yeah, you have uh, in the Kiko file uh, an animation that goes from frame, frame zero to 50, you can, uh, um, you know, clamp the frame range by just saying import the just animation from zero from zero to thirty. Uh, if you want to apply uh, your Kiko file on a hierarchy, just click on the hierarchy, and this works only for files that were exported uh, with a hierarchy, of course. Uh, here you can uh, also define a priority for your channels, operators, and item operators. Uh, so a priority list is basically the priority list is basically you know uh, when we export a Kiko file. All the operators and uh, you know the, the chunk of data are getting exported in an order, and of course those are uh, read in the same order when you import a file. If you care about having you know like a, the bake operator having the precedence over the curve operator and static operator, or uh, you know having a, a different order, you can tweak it here and uh, leave this on. And in this case, we don't we don't care at the moment, but yeah, like this is how you can do it. And the same thing is for the item operators in case you want to shuffle the, the priority. Uh, scale FPS is just for, you know, uh, whenever you export an uh, animation from a scene that has, uh, uh, it is at uh, 30, frame, uh, uh, 30 frame per second, and uh, for instance, your scene here is 24 frame per second. By having this activated, your uh, animation will be scaled using the ratio uh, between these two frame rates. Um, ignore item chunks uh, is on by default. It's just because uh, uh, for animation, um, where the you know like the item operators uh, most of the times are not uh, um, uh, useful because for instance uh, for the world, world matrix uh, world space operator if uh, we had this on and we exported actually this operator uh, when we uh, exported our file you would see in your animation uh, your animation completely baked uh, and this was this basically because we the, the world space operator data would be applied and then it's gonna prevent all the other uh, channel operators to run. This is because, of course, the, uh, the item operators have a precedence over the, uh, have the priority over the, uh, the channel operator. So uh, yeah, so basically that's the way it is. Um, then here you can also provide some sort of uh, um, remapping values. So say if you had like um, your rig from your original scene, not having any namespace, but in this scene you have a namespace, you can uh, provide it here. And this will be um, basically appended to, so, sorry, prepended to the names. Um, so fix is the same thing. You can also provide a string replacement in case you had like in your original scene uh, a namespace that uh, uh, is different from the namespace that you have in this scene. For instance, you had this namespace and then in this scene you have this namespace one. This replacement will actually take place when Kiko would uh, try to map the names uh, from uh, the Kiko file uh, to the objects that you have in, uh, in uh, this scene. I'm just gonna delete it for now just because we don't care at the moment. Also you can remap objects, so you can say for instance I want this object, the Kogo objects to be, the Kogo objects animation to be applied on the master, and you can do that by doing it like this, but of course at the moment we really don't want to do that. Uh, you can also um, apply, you know, remap, uh, you know, single channels like that. Um, and if you do that, please make sure to not have any uh, mapping for your uh, top uh, uh, object here, uh, because otherwise Kiko can't really match, uh, can't really work out the, the your remapping here. So please make sure just to use one or the other. Just gonna remove this mapping. Uh, and then here we have some preferences. So and at the moment it was just these break all connections in apply mode. So we just break the connections before applying the animation. So once you're ready, you can click import. But before that, I'm going to uh, delete the animation so that at least we see that Kiko is doing something. So yeah, so here it is. This is the exporter. Uh, so Kiko can work on the selection. So if you select an object, uh, in the scene, Kiko will try to work out, uh, try to import the animation only on the selected objects. Otherwise, you can just not select anything and uh, um, click import. And, and Kiko is uh, it's gonna try to find the, the object with the names that are stored inside the, the, the Kiko file inside your Maya scene. Um, of course, it's gonna also, also try to work out the names with uh, the mappings uh, and the, you know all the. Uh, you know the prefixes, the suffixes, and uh, you know the, the mappings here that you have provided. So um, I'm gonna click import, 
now the animation was imported and this is how you can use the Kiko UIs inside Maya thanks for watching